um, lived there for about eight years with my husband and two children. And um, so I've had a lot of mixed emotions about um, the path ever since I heard about it uh, a couple years ago now. And I, I still do. Um, sorry, I, I, I wrote something up and I guess I'll just read it. But um, I don't usually like to speak in public. And I think I have a lot of neighbors and friends who um, I don't want to disappoint. Uh, so when we bought our house, we bought our house for the same reasons that everybody buys their house, and that is because they think that um, it's, it's, the mo it's the best place to raise their family. And when we found Old Colony Lane, we found a mix of a lovely neighborhood with that, uh, also that lovely rural feeling. So it was a lovely mix, and I think that most people would agree that uni uh, Old Colony Lane is quite unique in what we have to, what we, what we, in the environment we live in. Um, and so, uh, as, as the ch my children got older, um, we had the benefit of using Robinson Woods to get us to the places we wanted to go. And that meant um, going up through uh, behind the Methodist Church, Methodist Church and ending up at 77. And that was, um, that's always been great for us. And we enjoy cross country skiing and biking and walking and all the things that we know we need to do because we all agree the shore road is not safe for us or our kids. Um, my husband, by the way, is a runner, and he does run Shore Road, and he does have to step off to the side of the road when, when cars are heading for him, and so I do appreciate the dangers that the runners face. Um, however, when I listen to people talk about how they can't wait for this path, or they're sorry that their own children weren't able to use a path because they're now grown, I have to ask myself at what age they feel that their kids would be perfectly safe stepping out onto a path um, that, um, about Shore Road. Um, my kids are 10 and 13, and I think, yes, both of them I would allow to come out of Shore Road and take a right and head up to school. Uh, the reality is my 10 and 13-year-olds carry backpacks, and they carry uh, instruments, musical instruments, and they carry laptops, and they carry um, sports equipment. And the reality of them really using the path on a regular basis, I don't, I don't really see as realistic. And then I think about them coming out of um, Old O'Connor Lane and taking a left. And I'm not sure I would ever feel safe, I don't care how old they were, um, walking to Fort Williams. Because in my opinion, so long as there are people who speed, and there are blind curves, and there are people um, on you their could cell just, phones. You just have a few more seconds. Okay. You wrap and there are people talking on their cell phones. I I'm just not certain Sh Shore Road will ever be safe. And so when people use the word safe, um, I just, I just wonder if they might think a little deeper about the reality of what, of what they're stepping out onto, no matter what is out there. All right, thank you. Good evening, my name is Jim Tassi. I live at 30 Cliff Avenue in Cape Elizabeth. Um, I've been involved with the SAFE Committee uh, for about a year and a half, two years now. Um, it's been exciting to see this project develop and get support. Um, with respect to some of the comments that were just made, I would just like to remind the council that according to AASHTO, the American Association of uh, Highway and Traffic Officials, uh, pedestrians are always safer where there is a side path or a sidewalk available. So there is no question that this project will materially improve the safety of Shore Road in addition to improving the walkability and the livability of our town. Um, I'm very excited at the uh, prospect of this project going forward and I hope you will support it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Ingrid Salvador, and I live at 24 Wood Road. And I wish, I just wish you would vote yes for the path because me and my brother would use it a lot, and and um, and so we hope you vote yes. Thank you. Uh, we have about a minute and a half left of the 15 minutes. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, it's yeah. coming. <laughs> Open it and crack and run right in. There. It's now a minute and 10 seconds. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm Tom McInerney. I live at 29 Old Fort Road. I'm in favor of this 100%. I'm a physician uh, on Spurwink Ave, and every day I take out a baseball bat and hit people over the head and say, you got to walk more, you got to run more, you got to exercise more. And I think this will be a great pathway, which will help me do my job better and keep my patients in the uh, 
uh, citizens of Cape Elizabeth a little healthier. So, is that quick enough? <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> you have a few seconds? Yes, please. Hi, I'm Terry Patterson. I live at 15 Surf Road. These are my little guys sitting in the front. Um, I just want to fully support this. I hope you guys all can vote yes. Um, I've got two boys with a lot of energy, and the, the more that I can get them on a bike and get them moving, hopefully towards school rather than away from school, is good. So thank you for your support. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Max Patterson, and I hope everyone will vote yes for the pathway. Thank you. Uh, I, we are up about to the 15-minute mark. Um, if anybody just feels they haven't had a chance, <coughs> could you raise your hand? Otherwise, I think we, we ought to move forward with discussion. <coughs> okay, thanks. Uh, at this point, I would open it up to council members for discussion, comments, or a motion. Sarah. Do you want a motion first? Yeah, why don't we do the motion first? Do you want a slightly thorough one? I. I think it may be appropriate to do a motion to... I, I think I'll go this. through this very quickly. So okay, don't. sure. Um, <clears throat> I move we accept the 729,000 Maine Department of Transportation grant for the Shore Road Pathway. Gratefully acknowledge and accept the donation of $100,000 in private donations collected by the Safe Access for Everyone <coughs> and approve the project funding as follows. Uh, Maine Department of Transportation grant 729,000, town center sidewalk account 60,000, balance remaining of July 2010 funding 26,000, PACS credit program 40,000, projected local donations from SAFE 100,000, infrastructure improvement fund 75,000 for a subtotal of 1,030,000. Uh, and finally, I move we authorize the town manager to locally administer the project working with the Maine Department of Transportation, including all acts necessary to complete the project within the total authorized amount. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Okay. Frank, second. Uh, any discussion? Jim. Uh, just a couple of questions, uh, maybe for the manager. Uh, when, when this uh, project was first brought forward, you know, some of the discussion about um, the amount of dollars involved were there any conversations about the sidewalk account being used as part of the process, or for that matter, the infrastructure um, improvement account? Were those ever on the table um, in, the, in the public way so that people understood that the dollars could, in fact, if necessary, come from those accounts? Go ahead. Yeah, I know the town center sidewalk account was specifically mentioned, because, particularly because of the piece. As it, as it does link to the town center. Uh, I, I do not recall the infrastructure improvement fund being specifically mentioned, although it was, it was set up for municipal infrastructure. And when, when it was set up, it was specifically, it was actually looking at the town center sidewalk as a way of trying to accomplish that. But, but I can't say it was, it was specifically set up. It was specifically mentioned in terms of the show road pathway. I don't, do not recall it being mentioned. And second question, David. Um, if this goes out to bid, um, and I assume that it will, and it comes back at less than what we've authorized today, what, um, what, uh, what is the position the town will take relative to how the monies are utilized? Yes. Yes, please, Mike. The, uh, I assume it was part of the, the motion, although it wasn't specifically read, is that any balance left in the fund would revert back to the infrastructure improvement fund. And, and clear that up. I appreciate that. And I'm sorry uh, to interrupt, Sarah. Would you accept that addition yeah. to your motion? Sorry, I skipped that part. Yep. Okay. And uh, Frank, is that acceptable to you as a seconder? Okay. Frank, you had a question? Yeah, I started with two questions. Uh, Mike, just, just to clarify, the funds that are coming from the town, could they be used for any other purpose besides this type of infrastructure purpose? In other words, I think there have been some suggestions that we should use it to reduce taxes, but my understanding is that's not really possible. The, the infrastructure improvement fund was established to, to fund municipal infrastructure. Uh, the town does have the right, the town council, to dissolve that fund if it's so desired and to have the monies go elsewhere. So that, that you could conceivably do that if that was the desire of the council. Second, second question. Mr. Silva suggested that we give the committee uh, until October to raise additional funds. What would be the implications of doing that? 
Yeah, and I had the same yeah. uh, question. It, it, Mike. The, the real danger is, is when we, we looked at every two years the, the main department of transportation <laughs> Uh, fund something called the Biennial Transportation Improvement Program, the BTIP. As, as we looked at this particular program, this particular grant, we were the only project funded statewide for full construction, the only one statewide. There were others that, that got some amounts to keep projects moving forward. We were the only one statewide. I can remember uh, the state actually funding, not to bring back bad memories, uh, they gave us a grant for a traffic light at the town center once. It later got pulled away as as issues happened. There was there was a tr the the original traffic light uh, down at the corner of Sperling Route 77. The same thing happened. There's a real danger with any main department transportation project that if you're not showing forward progress, that it may be pulled. The state, the the new commissioner of transportation, from from what I've heard, particularly through PAC sources and through MDOT staff members is very, very upset that there's a lot of money that they've, that they've awarded that people are slow to, to make it happen. Uh, so, so the real worry and fear is that if, if you don't act fairly quickly, uh, you, you're leaving yourself open that your funding gap could end up to be a lot more than the 75000 and you know, you'll give or take the other dollars that reasonable people can, you know, I think we can all say, you know, there's, there's some flexibility. The, the draft motion shows some flexibility in, in bringing resources to the table. Good. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Jessica? Yeah, I've got several. I mean, I, I've you know, been reading through this, and I, I did not support, personally, the Shore Road pathway. I, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a reality, and, I, and when it is, I certainly want it to be successful. Um, but. And I've, I've gotten some emails from citizens, um, and I want to bring up their point, and which is my point again as well, is that my understanding also was the deal was $200,000 from private funds. Now, and I, I appreciate what you know, Mike is saying about MDOT. I was wondering if uh, in the town budget, um, in Revenue 336, there's an MDOT block grant that shows $60,000 in that, is that something that could be used? Or what is that for? I was trying to look through the budget today, and of course my internet was all down, so I couldn't, I couldn't that send you a already, question. That money is, is, is in fact being used to reduce property taxes. Okay. That. It's, it's, a, it's a projected revenue that reduces property taxes. Okay. My other question is, and um, I've asked uh, item 92 to be tabled till June, but there there were plans for continuing sidewalks in the town center from uh, Shore Road along the town hall and ultimately to Old Ocean House and Fowler. So, you know, my concern about using that amount, that's why I was looking at that MDOT grant money, because when I look at our 60000 for town center sidewalk account, I'm thinking, well, gee, you know, what are we going to do when we look at continuing the town sidewalks as, as was originally planned? I mean, it was kind of tabled during the town's uh, intersection situation, but I, you know, I'm just concerned as to where those funds will come from someday, as Mike, we as we discuss that. Isn't there isn't there a line item that is sidewalk improvement? We budget seventy thousand dollars. Well, why don't I ask the town manager to respond to Jessica's question? Yes, uh, the town center sidewalk plan is part of the town center master plan. Uh, the town center master plan was adopted, I think, in 1991, maybe. It's about 20 years old. A at that point, the sidewalks were, were greatly improved on uh, along Scott Dyer Road, in front of the schools, and across the street here from the town hall. Uh, money ran out. Uh, it was then, in the 2008 bond, it was going to be done. The recession hit. and you know, the, the, it's not only sidewalks, it's drainage. It's very expensive. And, it, you know, I think if the town had moved forward at that point, uh, uh, you know, even though we don't have a recall provision for the council, it might have happened, <laughs> or an attempt at it, uh, you know, that the public wasn't in a mood to spend those monies. You know, the, the, there is no funding. In, in, of the, it's, it'd be a million dollars to, to uh, really fully implement the town center sidewalk project. Uh, you know, and that includes going down to Fowler Road, which is the expensive part, 
down beyond the high school driveway and then there's always